Well, hello, sonographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. Many vintage lenses have seen significant price rises in recent years, but there's one brand that seems to have bucked this trend, at least to some extent, and they can often be found more cheaply than lenses from other brands. I'm talking about the second series of Canon FD lenses, sometimes called the New FD or NFD series. They're optically excellent with great image quality, they're all readily available, and today we're going to look at four of them, three primes and a zoom. Let's begin with the NFD 28mm f2.8. I recently reviewed this lens in a group test of 28mm lenses and I was very impressed indeed with it. Like all the NFD lenses, there's a certain amount of plastic used in its construction, but that's really no handicap, and it does make the lenses feel quite light. Colour rendition from this lens is outstanding. It really makes colours pop. I quite like the saturated look, and this lens certainly has it, and it shares that characteristic with other lenses in the range. It makes big, bright and bold colours with loads of punch. Canon's long been associated with strong colour rendition and this lens is certainly in that tradition. I like the way it renders black and white too and the lens seems very well suited to rendering in monochrome giving strong blacks, whites and greys with a hint of silver that reminds me a little bit of a high contrast film. As long as there's no direct light source in the frame, it's got great contrast too, giving rich images that are full of body. The minimum focus distance of 30cm means that this lens has a certain amount of versatility and at that distance it makes some nice soft background blur that's creamy and dreamy and lovely. As with all wide-angle lenses, it falls off quickly with distance, but if you keep the aperture wide open, at moderate distances, it's just enough to soften the background a little bit and focus attention on the subject. I was very pleasantly surprised by the performance of this little lens. It's certainly one of the nicest, if not the nicest, of the 28 mils I've used, and good examples seem to go for around £40 or so, and that's quite a bit less than similar lenses from other manufacturers. The Olympus 28mm f2.8, for example, goes for around £60 to £100. When you consider the quality of the Canon's optics and of the images it makes, that's got to be great value. The 50mm f1.8 is one of the most popular in the FD range, and it offers a good balance between cost and quality. It's a light and compact lens, and although there's some plastic used in its construction, it doesn't feel cheap, and its optics are second to none. It's a very sharp lens with strong contrast, and it makes images that are punchy, bright, and full of depth and body, and if you're using it on a digital mirrorless camera, its inherently strong contrast makes focus peaking a breeze. At its maximum aperture of f1.8, it does vignette a little bit, but it's not too excessive. It's about the same as other 50mm 1.8 vintage lenses I've used, or possibly a little better. One area where this lens excels, at least to my eye, is in the way it renders colours. It does it beautifully. Personally, I like colours to have a bit of punch, a bit of sparkle, and this lens certainly comes up with the goods. Saturation is strong, colours are full, they leap right out of the image without too much in the way of subtlety or restraint, and colour rendition in general is very nice indeed. Black and white images are equally strong, punchy and bold, with lots of body and depth, helped by the lens's inherently strong contrast. If you like flares, this lens delivers. In direct sunlight, it flares like a good one, and that flare has plenty of vintage character. Background blur from this lens is very nice indeed, 
and shooting at the minimum focus distance of 45 centimeters, there's plenty of it too. It's nice and soft and smooth up close. At certain distances though, it can become a little busy and nervous. If you keep it wide open, it'll still give you some separation up to around five or six feet from your subject. All things considered, this is a very nice 50mm and at 25 to 30 pounds or so, right now, it's an absolute steal. Grab one while you can. The next lens we're going to look at is another 50mm, this time the f1.4. It's not that much wider in aperture than the 1.8, but this lens is a rather different animal. In fact, it's one of my favourites. Even wide open, this lens is very sharp. It's really contrasty too, and it makes strong images with plenty of depth and resonance. Colour rendering is very nice indeed, rich, strong and vibrant. There's a fine line between punchy colours and oversaturation, and these colours, I think, sit just the right side of that line. It works nicely for black and white images too. They're clean and clear, sharp and resonant, with vibrant blacks and whites. Greys have a silvery quality, which lends a filmy sort of feel to images, a very nice quality that not too many other lenses share. If you stop the lens right down, it makes some very cool looking sun stars from its eight bladed aperture. And if you like a bit of lens flare, this one won't disappoint. It makes some wonderful flares colored by the blue coatings, light bounces around inside it and makes a sort of plume effect. Some of the nicest flare I've seen from any lens. Background blur is beautiful. This being an f1.4 lens shooting close, there's plenty of blur on hand and the quality of that blur is very nice indeed. It's soft and creamy and lovely and it stays nice pretty much throughout the range without becoming busy or nervous. It's smooth more or less all the way. Point light sources make lots of lovely bubbles circular in the centre, becoming slightly elliptical towards the edges, and the effect is really quite beautiful. I must say I've been very impressed with this lens. It's sharp and contrasty, even wide open. It makes great background blur and some of the nicest flair I've seen. It's more expensive than the 1.8. They go for between 60 to 80 pounds or so, but it is a little nicer. If you can afford the extra, I think it's well worth it. The NFD 70 to 210 mm constant f4 is potentially a very useful lens, and I was keen to try it out. F4 is a bit slow, but at least it's a constant f4, which means that it doesn't get smaller as you zoom in. And because it's a long lens, it can make plenty of background blur, especially towards the longer end. It's very versatile too. It does away with the need for about three primes. So this is a lens that promises a lot, but does it deliver? Well, yes and no. It's a bit of a mixed bag. And while it's good in some areas, it's a bit less good in others. It's not sharpness that lets it down. In fact, this is quite a sharp lens with good contrast, nail focus, and it defines subjects very nicely. And the amount of fine detail it can render is pretty good. It's on a par with the FD prime lenses. It makes very nice black and white images, thanks largely to its good contrast with plenty of depth and richness. Shades of black, white and grey have depth and strength and overall it works really well in black and white. It makes images that have strong contrast, good sharpness and plenty of body. It works nicely in colour too. The colour signature is much the same as the FD prime lenses. Images have good saturation and strong, vibrant colours with plenty of punch. It is a lens that likes to vignette though, and when it does it, it does it pretty badly. It's most noticeable if you're shooting against an area of bright light, like the sky, 
and it doesn't just happen in the corners but across the top of the frame too. So while I wouldn't say this is a bad lens as such, it's very sharp and makes nice images, it does come with penalties. Size and weight is one, it vignettes quite a lot, especially at the long end, and it is a bit slow at f4. This is a versatile lens, it covers a wide range of focal lengths, and at 20 to 30 pounds, it's pretty cheap too. As an occasionally used lens, this one would be a good choice, but if you regularly use longer focal lengths, I'd suggest the better choice might be to buy a couple of primes, which won't have the same compromises. So there we are, four Canon FD lenses, three primes and a rather versatile zoom. These later FD lenses can sometimes be found a little more cheaply than equivalent lenses from other manufacturers, and there are bargains to be had if you look carefully. Optically, they're some of the nicest lenses I've used, and although there is some plastic used in their bodies, the important engineering parts are all metal. So that's it from me for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell, and if you like the content on this channel, please consider supporting it on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time for some more xenography.